Hey, I wanted to tell you about something that you're going to see in your email inbox here in the next few days, and we will put a link to this in the a description of today's podcast, but we are giving you a chance to give us some feedback about uh, the podcast. We want to know um, how we can better meet your needs, the things that you're looking for, uh, the things that you want from this podcast. When you listen or when you watch, what are you after? And so there's a link to a survey uh, in the comment section or in the description here of this podcast. You also get one in your email inbox. We would like to hear from you to tell us a little bit about what you think, how often you listen, what are you listening for, and how we can make this better. Please give us that feedback, and we'll do our best to shape this into the exact tool that you need to help improve your walk with Christ. Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we offer a brief lesson from a section of today's reading, then we examine a single relevant question that passage points us to. Today I'm joined by Wendy Korbacheski, and we're looking at a passage from Psalm 86, verses 1 through 7. So Psalm 86 is this beautiful model of prayer. It's, it's the prayer of David, and the opening verses demonstrate the relationship that the one who is praying um has with his God. No, notice that David gives reasons why the Lord um, should respond to his prayer. He says in verse 1, God should respond because David is in need of help. Verse 2, he says God should respond because David is devoted to him. He says God should respond because David serves him. God should respond because David trusts him. God should respond because he is David's God. Um. When you read this, it begs the question from the reader as to why they are reasons at all for God's response. Is God obligated to respond just because a person needs help? Um, is, is God obligated to respond just because a person has chosen to serve him or trust him? Um, the obvious answer is no, right? Uh, but behind these reasons lies the implication that David has a relationship with God. God, David uses terms that indicate he's a servant and God is the master. It talks about David's devotion, his service, his trust, and how they present David as a servant of the Lord. But the fact that David presents these points in combination with his own need for help and with the fact that he has chosen God to be his only God apart from any other deity would suggest that David recognizes God has obligated himself in relationship to David. So not only is David obligated to God, but he feels God is obligated to him. When from this perspective, we understand that God answers prayer not only because we need his help and not only because we're praying to the one true God, but rather because God has committed himself in relationship to his people. God answers prayer because he is faithful to his own commitment. That's a, that's a promise we can depend on. And uh, it says we have confidence when we pray that God will answer our prayer. Our confidence is not based on the manner in which we pray. Our confidence is not based on the fact that we are in need of God's help. Our confidence is not based on the degree of de our devotion to God. Our confidence is based upon this. God has chosen to be in a relationship with us. Therefore, he answers prayer because he is faithful in that relationship. So, Wendy, how does it change the way we think about prayer when we consider that God answers prayer because of his own faithfulness? Man, that's a faithfulness you just can't find anywhere else i i call it like a fortified trust it's like trust exclamation point um you know that he will never fail he will is not going to back down he is completely capable he is completely able um you can go to his word and pray his word those pray, pray those promises and that it's always going to be true and you, that's one of those times where you can use the word always, and it'll be uh, always. You know, if if God, if his answer in prayer was totally dependent on my faithfulness, mm. I don't know what I would get answered, right? Right. Um, but so how does this model of praying reflect on David's understanding about his relationship with God? David seems to be fairly confident mm -hmm. in his relationship. I think he's prayed these relational prayers with God so often that 
it's kind of evident that he understands God's character, you know, who he is on a relational level, so he can have those conversation conversations with him and knows that he can approach him that way. And it's not disrespectful, but it's that's the relationship they're in that I can come to you and I can pour out my heart to you like this and you know where I'm coming from, you know, and I and I could get away with it for, for mm-hmm. lack of a better term because you know my heart and I know exactly who you are because we have spent so much time in relationship with one another and he can trust in that. Yeah, it seems clear David has a unique relationship with the Lord mm-hmm. all, all throughout Scripture. Um, the Psalms, um, oh, recently I wrote a blog. What started me down that path was I was reading some of First and Second Samuel and the Psalms at the same time. And Psalms, I mean, Samuel and Chronicles, you know, they portray David as this person who is always on top, mm-hmm. you know, always getting ahead, always chosen. He, he has his moments, you know, but he, he is certainly favored by the Lord. But when you read the Psalms, he is schizophrenically depressed, you know, mm-hmm. all, all over the place, whining, you know, uh, the world's coming to an end. God, why have you deserted me? Um, and you know, some of the things even that David writes in the Psalms, I, I do you couldn't... think that some of them were ever intended to be read by other people? I don't think he ever intended for, for example, I don't write in my journal. So I keep three different kinds mm-hmm. of journals. I don't write in any of them. Well, I expect my kids maybe to read later, you know, as a matter of fact, about 25 years ago, I wrote something in a journal and about five years later, I went back and took white out to it because like, I was like, nah, I don't really want nobody to have to read, Mm -hmm. read this, even though it was what I was thinking at the moment, you know, it was a real raw moment. But I, 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 I I have some expectation that my heirs might read some of it. Some of them might have an interest in it, um, scanning through it, whether they read it word for word Mm -hmm. or not. But I don't have any expectation that I'm not keeping it with the intent that it's going to be re- right published. I'm you not even think that's how David was about sure. his psalms. Now the, the, these psalms, I believe, were his own personal way of journaling, pouring right? his heart out right. to the Lord, and everybody's reading it because I do think if I think sometimes he would have worded it differently. Mm-hmm. You know, I I will write things in my journal. Um, that I would say nowhere else. Mm-hmm. Like I would, you you would never get me to utter them in public or to a person. Um, but and it's not because they're inappropriate or anything like that. It's right. just like well, it's, it's I'm like, measured. It's like Chronicles versus Psalms right. and Samuel. It's it's like public figure David right. and raw, real behind the right. scenes David. Somebody said this somewhere, and I, and I have like used it a thousand times. So this isn't original to me, but um, I try to be authentic with everybody, mm-hmm. but I'm not transparent with everybody because everybody that's, there's a big difference. Difference, they, right? They, everybody, mm-hmm. everybody hasn't, everybody doesn't deserve for me to be transparent with. And them. you shouldn't be. And it's reserved. That's right. It's mm-hmm. it's dangerous, right? Circle. Some people can't mm-hmm. handle it, mm-hmm. right? Some mm-hmm. people can't handle transparency. And so I think you should be authentic with everybody. You should be transparent with a few. Like the example, so just in case somebody's want to challenge me about this, mm-hmm. um, the the example that I give is uh, if I had small kids at home and my wife's and I's marriage was in trouble, right? You're going to be able to sense some of those things, mm-hmm. right? You don't sit that kid down and say, your mom cheated on me and she loves another man, right? Even though some stupid people do. Forgive me if I just spoke to you. <laughs> That's transparency, right? Right. They they do not have enough information, nor are they mature enough to decipher right. and process mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what that means. Being authentic, saying, you know, we're having a tough day, right? We're trying to figure some things out. We We are not getting along right this minute. Like that's that's fair, that's mm-hmm. being authentic. Not pretending like everything's perfect, right? So they're blindsided, you don't have to do that. That's not being authentic. But I think you being authentic says, 
you know, hey, yeah, we're struggling. But being transparent, you're transparent with your counselor. You're not transparent with your eight-year-old, right? Right. right. And I don't think David, in the, the Psalms are very transparent. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were intended to be. He never had any intention that 5,000 years later I'm going to be sitting in a room with a microphone in my face dissecting it telling mm-hmm. everybody you know he's a whiner right <laughs> i don't think that was what he was expecting right and um but i do think it reveals the extent of his relationship because he says things i might would say them in prayer i might but i'm not my i i'm 100 percent sure my um I'm not, I have some traits that might be David like, but I, th- that is not mm-hmm. what I want, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just not a big woe is me person. Like right. The whole, whole world's against me, but I'm going to praise the Lord anyway. I, I just think I ain't made up that way. But I, I don't, I don't write with the expectation everybody's going to read it. Do you? No, no. If it was, if it's in a journal, it's in a journal. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, on, that's for a reason. If I intended for everybody to see it, I would have, put it someplace where it was published or is, yeah. you know, public. Yeah, I'll even so, tell people yeah. I'm much more guarded about my social media. I wish I could get my mouth to be as guarded when I talk as I am about my social wish media posts. Mm-hmm. Because, I, I mean, I have written things 50 times and then just thought, no, I'm just, just going to leave it alone. Delete the I, whole I don't thing. Need to, yeah. I don't need to talk about this right now uh, because it just doesn't lend itself to, you know, when somebody's dead and gone. Nobody can do anything about it. So. That's right. Um, so when you pray, how does mm-hmm. it reflect your understanding of your relationship with God? I've got a few friends who I know when they are in prayer with God, their their prayer or life with God is like he's, and it's and it's very genuine. It's very authentic for them. Like their relationship with God is God is my friend. And I think, you know, there's scripture that bears that out. He, that he has made us a, a, fr- a friend of God. But I, I, it's that's not evidence in my in my prayer life that that friendship. I don't know why, but I for me it's a little more authoritative. It's more of a father figure in my relationship with him. Um, it's more of like a confidant and um, a provider, a comforter. Um, but. I, like if I'm angry about something or a situation, that's how I approach him. But my friends who's like, I'm a friend of God, I'll go to him and I'll rant and I'll scream and I'll just be angry and throw it all out there at him. And then I'll reel it back in and he'll talk to me and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. Mm-hmm. That's that's not my relationship in pr- in my prayer life with God, I, it's it's more of a a, a comfort or like a, a a blanket place of a father figure right. for me. Well, I don't even know how I would describe it. Uh, for me, I'm confident in my relationship, but typically, so in in my morning journals, I have a morning and evening journal, and then I have a script a bible journal mm-hmm. and i have a sermon journal and um but i have a you know a daily prayer section that i, I write I type out a prayer every day that's the only one that's digital is that one and um i find it very very similar to um like when we have 21 days of prayer mm-hmm. whatever is rolling through my head right at that moment because I read my Bible first. Whatever's rolling through my mind at that particular time, um, like for today, example, today's the, today's reading, not today when you're hearing this reading, mm-hmm. but today's reading when I'm recording this was mm-hmm. Luke chapter 1. And John the Baptist is going to be born and, 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 the, and Gabriel tells Zechariah, you know, you're going to have a child. And he said, you know, he tells him all the things he's going to do, but then he says, no, um, he won't drink alcohol or any fermented drink, right? 
So drinking it in my thing, that, right. that, that, that wasn't my thing, but it was common for them. And it was, it, you were a real weirdo if you didn't drink wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the beverage of choice, mm -hmm. you know, you want no sweet tea. Um, you didn't trust the water. Um, mm -hmm. but if you, if you didn't drink wine, you, you were a weirdo uh, for a minute drink was safest to drink. Um, but the question I've asked myself, and this is kind of how I formed my prayer was, you know, what things do I need to lay down that would set me apart to do what God has called me to do more effectively? What, what things that might be acceptable, even normal, mm -hmm. should I refrain from or abstain from that would make me more effective? So that's when I pray, that tends to be, it, it gets shaped by my, the Bible. Which Almost Bible always, what I've read, you know, 21 days of prayer. Um, you could, if you went through my things where I take notes when we do it, whatever they talk about, mm -hmm. I tend to make a list that is related to that. And that's where I spend my time. And that's the goal of what they're doing anyway. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 it's shaped more by what the Holy Spirit is saying to me right at that particular moment. Um, I don't, I wish I was better at praise. I just wish I was better at praise in general. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I don't, not, not for you or not for my wife or not for God. Right. That's terrible to say, but I, I struggle with it. Mm -hmm. um, I can do it when it's formulated in um, writing or in a song, mm -hmm. but it just nat naturally does. It does not come natural to me. Um, I, I, I want to say what I got to say, and let's go, you know. And I want, but I want to hear what God's got to say to me. Right. That's a lot of how I pray. Uh, this is how what I think God's saying to me, and I'm typing it out, or I'm writing it out. What What's God speaking to me in that? moment but it's it's weird how all of us have different relationships because i have a different relationship with my dad my earthly father than mm -hmm. maybe you did right um uh and and i think all of us have you know our relationships are different and sometimes that good or bad impacts our how, how spiritual you see, relation how mm -hmm. you see yeah, God. how we pray mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right be. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us Monday as we continue a conversation around our daily Bible reading. <laughs>